today on the program. With abortion being more difficult to do in some places now, the abortion industry is looking to prioritize chemical abortions. We'll talk about what they're doing, what their plans are, and what the risks are today on the program. In addition, the Supreme Court has said you can no longer discriminate against religious schools in school choice programs. But the Attorney General of Maine is desperate to continue discriminating against them. We'll give you the strange details today in the program. Also, the result of Dobbs is a cause for celebration, but the story of how we got a majority Supreme Court that would vote to overturn Roe is one worth remembering. We're going to tell that story at the end of the program today, so stay tuned for that. But first, our top story today. After a string of favorable rulings from the U.S. Supreme Court on some major cases, the justices yesterday finished their landmark term. And in one of the final decisions, the Supreme Court affirmed the right of the Biden administration to end Title 42, the Trump era order that gives Border Patrol agents the power to turn away migrants on public health grounds. Now, the 5-4 decision was welcomed by Democratic leaders who are calling for President Biden to quickly end the program. But Republicans warn against rescinding Title 42, saying it will increase the already record numbers of legal, illegal border crossings. Congressman James Comer had this to say just days before the Supreme Court ruling. When we talk to the Border Patrol, they say that this administration continues to do things to tie their hands, like the recent announcement to suspend Title 42. Uh, that's only making the illegal border crossings significantly increase. When the, boarding, when the border cross, okay. crossing increases, there's more drugs that go across the border. So this administration is going to have to get serious. So what might we see moving forward? Joining me now to talk about it is U.S. Congressman Chuck Fleischman, who serves on three subcommittees in the House Appropriations Committee, including the Subcommittee on Homeland Security and the Subcommittee on Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and Related Agencies. He represents the third congressional district of Tennessee. Congressman, welcome back to Washington Watch. Joseph, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. It's good to speak with you. The Supreme Court decided the Biden administration has the executive authority to end the remain in Mexico policy if they wish. What's your reaction to that? Well, as the ranking member, the highest Republican on the Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, I deal every day with the frailties and the failures of the Biden administration at the border whether it's the Title 42 policy, which they want to get rid of, whether now they want to get rid of the, the uh, buffer in Mexico where people were staying, these were working. Anything that was keeping our border safe under President Trump, who was a genius when it came to the border, uh, we were safe, crossings were down, the wall was getting built. Uh, Biden has taken us in the complete different direction. I think what we have to do is look at it two ways. First of all, uh, in respect to the Supreme Court, which I think had a very good week uh, with the Dobbs decision and re repealing and rolling back the EPA strength, we've got to remember that they've got to rule independently. So on a legal basis, on a legal basis, uh, I think it was the correct decision. The result is a disaster, but upholding the executive branch's enumerated right to make these decisions. First, it was President Trump. I think he did it the right way. Now it's President Biden. I think he's doing it the wrong way, but that's not for the court to have to decide. That's something within the purview of the executive branch. Congress is now gonna have to come in. I'm gonna have to come in with my brethren, my good conservative brethren, and do everything possible to plug up this dangerously porous border, which is crime ridden. Um, it's being overridden. We could see another 2 million, 2 million illegal immigrants pour over and just be released willy nilly into the country. It's wrong. It's bad. But in fairness to the court, and we've got to be very respectful of the court, uh, legally, given the constitutional constraints that they had, uh, they made the right decision. 
And Congressman Fleischman, I think you make a really important point there because there's been a lot of debate about the court. But we as conservatives understand that the process is more important in many cases than the outcome. And what we've seen in a lot of these cases is the left doesn't really think about the legal reasoning. They don't think about the process, the checks and balances, the limits of power that each branch has. They're just outraged by the result. In this case, we might be frustrated that the executive branch has made this decision, but that does not mean the executive branch doesn't have the power to do so. And there's a big difference between whether they, between those things, whether they have the power or they should exercise that power. And I appreciate you making uh, that distinction. You know, on the border policy, uh, there's some polling that shows that 51 percent of Hispanic voters support the remain in Mexico policy. We've seen some districts there on the Texas U.S. border uh, vote for Republicans for the first time in more than 100 years. Do you think as a political matter that's going to be significant if it, if the Biden administration follows through on their promise to revoke and repeal the remain in Mexico policy? The most fascinating thing we have seen is in the Latino community, the tremendous move toward the Republican Party. And I've always said, um, our Latino friends uh, believe in God. They believe uh, in the free enterprise system. Many of these people flee the horrors of socialism, whether it's in Cuba or Venezuela or these countries. These people know when they come here that freedom is to be cherished, the rule of law is to be cherished. And I will say this, uh, Republicans are going to do extremely well again in uh, the Latino community all across this great nation uh, because the Biden administration, whether it's at the border with its failed policies, whether it's with its radical left-wing agenda, anything it touches, uh, wanting to change uh, uh, America for the wrong way, uh, they will not succeed because the good people of this country um, across racial, ethnic, and, and, and sex lines will certainly embrace good, solid Republican conservative principles that uphold our Constitution and the rule of law. And another question on kind of public sentiment on this issue, because the Remain in Mexico policy applies to people who have sought asylum. And the question is, where do they wait for that to be adjudicated? Do they wait in the country of origin in Mexico, where they're coming from in many cases, or do they wait in the United States for that decision to be resolved? And sometimes it takes years to do so. The federal government's own data shows that about 1.6% of those asylum seekers have a valid claim, which indicates that people are making baseless claims for asylum and then coming into the country and then simply disappearing while that uh, while that decision is uh, made by the by the US government does it matter to the Biden administration that their own data shows that the vast majority 98% of all of those asylum claims are not valid it doesn't matter to the Biden administration because every move that we make to secure the border with technology, with people, anything that is successful, building the wall. Uh, I got wall funding, President Trump's wall funding in the last appropriations bill. Biden just refuses to build it. Why? Because it works. Uh, make it clear, this administration wants open and porous borders. They do not care. They will afford anything that works. And the reality is uh, it's an abysmal failure for the United States. It is so bad right now, Joseph, that the Biden administration wants to take the asylum decision away from administrative law judges and let border patrol agents make that decision. Why? Because when they do it, people will scream right into this country. Uh, they'll be rubber stamped and, and they'll go right in and it's, it's a disaster. So the bottom line answer is Biden and his radical left wing minions are doing everything possible to hurt our border security. It's an outrage. The American people deserve better. We will get better. Congressman Fleischman, I want to deal with another topic with you. You've already mentioned it, but the Supreme Court had another decision significantly impacting the Environmental Protection Agency and their ability to govern through rule, agency rules. What is the impact of that decision? This is a very powerful, impactful decision. And let me step back a little bit as a constitutional lawyer and, and in full respect of our great republic. Congress has this constitutional authority. Make it clear. Uh, it is in the Constitution. 
What has happened over time? Sadly, Congress as an institution has given up this authority to the executive branch. That's outrageous. So the creation of the IRS, the creation of the EPA, the creation of the SEC, pick the government agency, many of whom have gone out and created their own courts, if you can believe it. Uh, This is Congress, I believe, giving up its authority wrongly. The American people need to make sure that Congress takes this authority making decision back. Why? Because as a duly elected representative of the people of the third district or any of my 435 brethren in the house, I am responsible to my constituents for my decisions at the ballot box. These unelected bureaucrats uh, at EPA or at any of these other organizations, IRS, that come up with their own agenda and enforce it their own way are not accountable to the people of this country and they've abused that power for years. So the impact of this decision is huge, it's correct, and the American people ought to, as constitutionalists, demand that Congress take this power back. They should have never given it away. That is a lazy congressional activity that has gone back for decades. Congress needs to take that back, not only have power of the purse, power of oversight, and hold these government agencies accountable for their rulings. Fundamentally, uh, if you like the decisions that the APA was making, uh, that's okay, but Congress has to be the one to make those decisions, and that's what the Supreme Court said. It's not necessarily about what they're doing, but is the right person, is the right agency, the right part of our government doing that? One final issue, uh, the Biden administration continues to respond to Dobbs. Here's what President Biden had to say. Let's play clip one. And I share the public outrage that this extremist court has committed to moving America backwards with fewer rights, less autonomy, and politicians invading the most personal decisions that not only women, but we'll find if they expand expand on on this decision, uh, men as well. But as I've said last week, this is not over. Congressman Fleischman, in about 30 seconds, what does he mean it's not over? Well, the bumbling president reading from his left-wing teleprompter can't even articulate this message correctly, but we have got to realize this was a landmark decision curing one of the worst precedents that was ever set in American jurisprudence. Roe versus Wade was and is flawed constitutional law that was brought out by the justices. It took tremendous courage to basically get it right. We're a nation, a rule of law, we got it right. But conservatives and Christians cannot rest on their laurels. We've got to remember this, the left is going to come fighting back. Conservatives need to stand up and and that's the point and we do have to go congressman fleischman thank you for your time sorry to be so brief we'll be back with more right after the break